welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by my guy, Nate Weitzer, hanging on the East Coast. We are looking at some more round two playoff games, specifically in this one, Nate. We're looking at Brooklyn and Milwaukee. It has not been the series we have been looking for uh, at to this point, especially if you are a Bucks fan. Uh, we'll get to that in one sec. If you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com and find all those listings and sweet, sweet NBA pro. Uh, playoff promos in your area uh, jump in the comments make sure you are liked and subscribed to the page we will have a gift card opportunity not in this video but in another one coming up tomorrow for you guys uh, so lock in but for now nate let's get into that game three nets bucks series yeah and after the nets were up by nearly 50 points in the fourth quarter they are underdogs <laughs> as we go to milwaukee plus three and a half uh, plus 145 on the money line, and the total sits at 234. Now, the under has gone, has hit in four straight meetings between these teams, usually because the total was much higher. But, I mean, really what stood out so far in this series has not been the Nets' offense. It's the defense and their game planning against Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton, which has kind of gone under the radar here. Um, I mean, the way the Bucks are able – it's it's known that Giannis is not a closer in, in these obvious situations, right? I mean, he puts up huge regular season numbers, but he cannot shoot the ball, so he cannot be a playoff closer. But Chris Middleton has stepped up in the past to, to carry the Bucks at least to some postseason success. He's shooting 30% in this series. He has five assists and seven turnovers. Giannis has eight assists and eight turnovers. And the Bucks offense has just been atrocious. I think it's a 97 offensive rating. Credit to the Nets defense, credit to resurgent Blake Griffin. Um, I think we all expect Milwaukee to be a little bit better offensively as they go home, but I, I think it's a little bit overlooked how important Dante DiVincenzo is to this team. I mean, mostly because he's not a guy that puts up stats. He's just a guy who really creates a lot of movement with his cutting, um, very high energy, very athletic. They actually shoot 39% from three with him and 35% without him this year. Their points per game drops from 121 to 111 when he doesn't play. And they're two and four with a negative two net rating without Dante. Um, I think we were remiss not to mention that at the outset of this series uh, because it's clearly been a big factor. And and really the Nets, I mean, they have everything going for them, don't they? I mean, they, they just... They, <laughs> the offense, the yeah. defense, they, they don't have James Harden, but they're doing they're doing just Yeah, fine. so this three and a half points uh, that doesn't seem to be moving too much. Uh, it's been been pretty stagnant. That's based on the fact that I guess all the hopes and dreams the Bucks would have this season rest on game three and they're at home. That's that's the only thing we have to assume. Right. So uh, I, I, that doesn't do it for me. Uh, it doesn't sound like it does it for you either. Um, and really, I think aside from, you know, White Dante being a huge storyline uh, and his absence being big for this team, surprisingly big, 10 points on offense big. That's crazy. Uh, but but more importantly, we all forgot Kevin Durant was the best player in the world and the best player in the league. And not for this podcast, but for another time, I would have the argument at some point soon that the one of the best, if not the best player of all time like unreal it's a short span but what he's doing and what he's able to do I mean that crossover that's going to be on the highlight reels for a while where he made you know Giannis buckle like a deer on ice and then hit the three while getting fouled he didn't even have to cross over the second time the point is is you can't block his shot he's too tall right and he's been hitting all of his shots from the exact same place on the floor his shot chart is incredible it's either at the rim at the top of the key shooting a three at the wing or the baseline on the right side every single time. And Giannis is exerting a ton of effort on defense. This is not Jimmy Butler, who he was able to just put on in clamps uh, in the first series. So, I, I, yeah, it's not enough to me that, you know, this game is going back to Milwaukee, that the, the Bucks are playing for everything. It doesn't matter how hard they try. To me, it's not a matter of effort. As you mentioned, Chris Middleton has been ghosted in this series. Uh, and really, if the role players are going to be doing what they're doing for Brooklyn, to me, it is a wrap. I, at the, you know, they don't even have James Harden, as, as we've mentioned. Uh, Mike James is coming out of nowhere to, to do what he's doing and looks like he's played in the playoffs his entire career. 
at that point, you know, Blake Griffin, we already know what he's capable of doing. An incredible uh, five small ball guy for them with the ability to pass from all over the floor and stretch it. Uh, I'm terrified of this team. It has the the the, the feel of a, of a Warriors KD style team with the stars, the role players, everybody knowing what they're doing and all in, in, in simpatico. Uh, so I, I, is there any reason to bet on anything specifically for Milwaukee left in your eyes? I mean, I do expect the Nets to drop one at some point in okay. the series. I don't know if it's going to be after they get that 3-0 lead or not. I would look at betting the Nets to win in five with plus 230 odds at FanDuel. Or if you want to hedge your bets a little, you get minus 180 for them to win this series by at least one game. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, to your point, KD, probably the most unguardable player of all time. I mean, clearly not the same proven winner that we've seen from any of the legends right. yet. Um, but yeah, he's just completely unstoppable. Um, a 116 offensive rating in these playoffs, including 142 last time out. Um, and he hasn't seen much of a dip. He's about 115 offensive rating and 69 career playoff games on the road. Um, I'm, I am looking for him to carry a bit more low because Kyrie has been yeah. less impressive in road playoff games. Um, but Durant, his points prop at 32 and a half is right on the edge of where I would consider the overall. I like him to just outscore Giannis to be the top scorer tonight. That's plus 150 at FanDuel. I mean, the Nets just have have the right um, matchups to, to put in place to stop Giannis, it, it, it seems. Now, I mean, Milwaukee is a very impressive team at home. They are going to come out with everything on the line. But you brought up in the last pod, Brooklyn has just been fantastic in the third yeah. quarter. They're just outscoring teams uh, by 18.8 points per 100 possessions. They have an offense rating 132. So I would expect maybe Milwaukee to to, to give their best shot here early, uh, maybe cover that first first half spread or at least keep it close. And then we just kind of see Durant and the role players pull away. Uh, I think your one of your safest bets is the Nets to go over 115 and a half <laughs> at FanDuel. Um, and again, going back to Katie's performance on the road, I think he hits three plus threes and they get the win that will get you plus 250 with the fan duel bonuses. Um, and Blake, uh, in terms of his rebounding, his prop is at seven and a half and he has 22 boards in these two games. He's logging a ton of minutes as the Nets preferred option at center. So I feel comfortable taking the over on that as well. 115 for the Brooklyn Nets is laughable. Laughable. They scored 115 in a horrible offensive game one. Uh, and the KD stats, I've been waiting to take his stats. I thought game two was also going to be a blowout, as we talked about in the last pod for Brooklyn. That scared me away from his 32 and a half points because of the fact that, one, once again, he didn't play the fourth quarter um, and there was no need to. So, yeah, that 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 terrified me. I think uh, in this one, you can go back to the stars. I think game two is a game to bet on some of the uh, role players like Bruce Brown and Joe Harris. Uh, like Mike James. Um, and then this is the game where you come back to KD and rely on him to be playing in that fourth quarter in crunch time. Uh, I might tease his points up uh, on uh, DraftKings. You can actually get him at 35, 34 and a half points uh, and get about plus 180 on your money there. I really like that. Um, and then, yeah, once KD is the top scorer in the game, book that in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I, I, there's, there's one person that I think you're going to continue to be able to count on for his team every single game. Uh, because of the style of play that they have and the fact that at the end of the day, he is the safest bet to get you a bucket, even if he's being double guard, you know, double teamed at, the, at that point, right? Uh, another guy like that right now is Donovan Mitchell, which is for another video. But, uh, you know, those are the two hottest offensive players in the playoffs for sure. Going to continue to look at Brooklyn at least to cover their points. Love that. And then KD uh, game three. But it's going to be a really good one, Nate. I think Milwaukee is going to come out clawing and scratching. We'll see a lot of the Budenholzer uh, grit and grind in this game. Hopefully a little bit better defense. Don't think it'll matter, um, but it'll be fun. So uh, make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page, y'all. We'll be back with another video for you guys uh, tomorrow that will have a gift card opportunity. Uh, so stay tuned. And until then, happy betting.